evening, my friends. Tonight, we're going to do a mashup between Allie and Colin. I don't think I've done one yet. And there are a lot of unanswered questions in their timeline, like missing hours. The first two things, though, that I have a question about. Uh, I would like to know, I know we have at least two friends down here or in here who are down in the Canton area. And if you are, I might have things at the probate court that you actually have to pick up. And if you could give me a hand with that, that would be awesome. It's the Nor Norfolk. Why can't I pronounce that word? It's the same county that all of this is happening in. And if you're down there, like in the area, and it wouldn't be a huge deal. If you could help me out, that'd be awesome. There are things at the probate court. I just have to fill out the paperwork. And I don't know if I have to like fax it to you. What is this? Anyway, so that's question one. If any of our beautiful, lovely friends are in the area and can pick something up at the probate court for me. Question two. I looked online for Colin's shoe size. I think an educated guess is he's probably a nine and a half. I've dated boys, men, whatever. And I'm just guessing he's nine and a half. If anyone knows what size shoe he is, I'm, or can confirm that he's a nine and a half, then they'll answer that question. Tonight, I would like to look at Allie and Colin because I want to know if this was premeditated or Colin. And the reason is because if Karen dropped him off at 1220 and Allie picked him up, I hate their testimony. It's confusing. Okay, so regardless, there's an hour missing between 1230 and 130 she lied about. And the timing of Colin texting Allie, which I'll put in here, and Colin leaving. Well, what is it when you get hit once and you get knocked out? That's what this is starting to look like. And I got that we need to go back into it. So I just tried to do yes, no's, and the cards didn't feel like playing. So we're going to do a mashup. I want to know how culpable Allie was. Allie might be way more instrumental in this cover up than we knew. I didn't give her enough credit. I thought we had kind of solved all the, the Allie stuff. No, we haven't. <laughs> and my assumption was definitely wrong. So why don't we do a mashup between Colin and Allie that night? I don't, all I care about is that night. And all I care about is before the party, was it premeditated? Was she carrying clothes in Jen's Jeep? I know we got that for him to change into. today. I think it's Aussie Insider. Eat and corruption all day long. Oh, do that day. Did a video on Allie perhaps driving Jen McCabe's Jeep, which explains a lot of things. And what she, that Allie may have been driving Jeep that night. And it says there's something off about Allie's little brown and white dog rescue story. It makes no sense and has nothing to do with Karen Reed or John O'Keefe or even Colin. This particular untold story is somewhat of a mystery, but there may be a way to find out if that unnecessary detail actually happened. Of all the things that Ali McCabe testified to, the only thing that the media took notice of was her allegation that she was harassed. I say allegation because it is just an allegation. There's no evidence to support it. I know there were protests at the time in and around Canton and near the home, but that's not the same as harassment. Nonetheless, that was the only takeaway that the mainstream media had from her testimony. 
there was an ultra weird detail that she included in her testimony that for some reason Lally seemed ultra concerned about. Here's that segment of her testimony. And uh, the game gets over. Where was it that you went? Um, I believe I was just driving around with two of my friends. And then we, as we were driving, we came across a dog on the side of the street. We knew a snowstorm was coming. Um, we picked the dog up and then brought it to the police station and then drove the dog back to where its owner's house. Common sense. On the night of a blizzard, why would a dog be out missing? I don't know. There's so much. So let's read on this and see if, because this might be how Chloe got out of there. That's where this goes. I might as well find out. Let's check. Um, uh, say drove around. Uh, whereabouts were you driving around? Um, through Canton, pretty aimlessly, just driving. And at some point you come upon a dog, is that correct? Correct. And uh, what is that? Um, I'm straight. And um, was a dog obviously got familiar to you, is that correct? Yes. What did you do with the dog? Um, the dog ran over to the car when we stopped and picked the dog up and we didn't really know what to do with it. So we brought it to the police station. Recall at all what kind of, what kind of dog it was? No, white. It was small. It was white and, white and brown. Not sure what type. And so while you're at the police station, what, if anything, did you learn about that dog that you brought to the police station? Um, brought the, or I went in the police station, the dog stayed in the car with one of my friends and, um, I was walking in and telling the officer that I found a dog. He got a call from the owner and she asked if she was like, oh, can you return my dog, please? And so you brought the dog back to the owner? Yes. Do you know what time all of that was going on? I'm not, ex I'm not sure. So yeah, what's that unnecessary detail all about? If it were just that Lally wanted to put her somewhere at a specific time, then he would have already known that she didn't know what time that was. Or he could have introduced into evidence CCTV of her actually going into the police station at that time to prove that she was where he thinks she was at that time. But it really doesn't seem to me that that was the point of him going into detail about the little brown and white dog because he didn't follow it up with anything. I didn't think much of it at the time, but the thing that did capture my attention was all the hoo-ha they were making about the white Jeep and making sure that everybody knew that it was Higgins' white Jeep. I thought maybe they're just trying to discredit Ryan Nail's testimony by putting the white Jeep in between his vehicle and Karen Reed's vehicle so that it might seem he couldn't have seen what he was saying he saw because there was a Jeep in the way. But shout out to Joe Flipperhead for bringing this to my attention. Guess who else has a white Jeep? Not just any old white Jeep, a Jeep Wrangler. You type a Jeep that works best in a blizzard. Ali's car, a little blue Ford Fusion, was not equipped for driving in the snow. So now we're all wondering, was Ali McCabe driving Jen McCabe's white Jeep Wrangler that night? And more importantly... Why did Jen McCabe Higgy's white Jeep Wrangler had a black soft roof top as well? And could the unnecessary detail about the little brown and white dog be some sort of cover story for Ali's Life 360 or maybe even CCTV later showing that she was getting around in Jen McCabe's white Jeep with a dog in the car? switch out the soft black rooftop for a hard white rooftop a little while later. I feel like I don't really need to read on this, but we're here. So did Allie have Jen McCabe's Jeep the night of the unaliving of John O'Keefe? It's Allie driving Jen McCabe's Jeep. As long as you're ready. I'm going to say, yeah, as long as you're ready. What does that even mean? These cards. Oh, weather permitting. I just missed it. That was the card on the other side. Shoot. Um, just put them back together. If you're in the bleachers, this might be a little confusing. I, oh dang. I just, um, well, I can find it. But what I did was I split it and it said, as long as you're ready. And on the other side, the one I didn't look at until I was putting them back together said weather permitting. So she was hesitant to drive her own car because it was the weather. 
Of course, CCTV isn't going to show us how big or small the dog is or what kind of dog it is. It's probably just going to show the shape of a dog in perhaps the passenger seat. And I suspect that dog was Chloe. The reason I suspect that dog was Chloe is because nobody mentions the dog barking. Jen McCabe doesn't mention the dog barking at her when she burst into the bedroom and surprised her sister. Nobody hears the dog barking at the women shrieking out the front of the house. Okay, was Chloe in Jen McCabe's Jeep? This answer is negative. Okay, I have to ask it a different way. Was Allie driving with Chloe in the Jeep? Possibly. It's guaranteed. She's right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, we got, yeah, it's guaranteed. We also have possibly here, but this is on the other side of the cut. So she's right. Life 360 said she drove around. Was she at the high school? Does anyone actually have these three Life 360 or is this part of the Fed stuff? We could see that, then I guess that would answer all of our questions. We wouldn't need to. I have a lot of questions. Allie is a Pisces. She's a moon. The moon. She's a February 20th baby. And Colin is March. So I'm giving him Aries because he has that energy. Doesn't have a Pisces. Well, maybe he does. I don't know. I think he acts like a fire sign. But plus, most of the time you see the fire signs on the front page of the papers for true crime. So we're just going to look into Colin and Allie. There's way more there. That's where our secrets are. All right, I'm going to do Allie on the left, Colin on the right. Hmm. I said Allie on the left, Colin on the right. Oh, Colin might. Remember when I thought they should get, they were going to get married so she didn't have to testify against him and everyone's like, no. Well. Allie on the left, Colin on the right. Allie on the left, Colin on the right. Oh, Karen's here. Thank God. Hi, Karen. Welcome. Glad you're here. Oh, boy. Yep. Allie on the right. No, wait. Allie on the left, Colin on the right. I just want to make sure you guys can see this. Okay. I forgot to turn the top on. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, I think I did. You might have a problem. I'm going to mute you for, or pause you for just a second. The top's not on. Oh, and I saw some people were confused and asking if I was okay. Yeah, I just started reposting the card only versions as I find them. So they're not new. I would never. But just so you know, everything's totally fine. This isn't recording, so BRB. Okay, the top song. Good thing I checked. All right, so we must have been on Colin. I mean, uh, Allie on the left, Colin on the right. All right, well, let's start reading. Karen's here. All right. Allie wants to get out of town. Actually, why don't we put them together? So Allie wants to get out of town and Colin is pondering, but he's looking at Allie. He knows that Allie holds the key. Okay. Then chubby fingers for Colin. Yep. And Allie perhaps got some money. Chubby fingers for Colin and Allie was offered a deal. But this was not the kind of deal Josh Levy was going to make. Here's our contract, right? Literally right here. And he got fighting. Yeah. You don't need Tara to tell us that. She's a hard worker. Who cares? She's be in jail. And that's allegedly based on the documents that I saw online. Thank you, Turtle Boy. And Boston has a couple of news. And here's the King of Wands. Well. Jennifer McCabe is queen of wands, so she stands in her masculine. <laughs> Allie's the key. Didn't we say one time that they should go? Oh, it was her dad, Matt McCabe. I 
And I know Sean, I have little to zero respect for him right now. And everyone has their own opinions, I'm sure. I was one of the first to unfollow him, though, I'll tell you that. He has made, re- I don't know, though. He's like a patsy for the dark side. So I guess it doesn't matter. I was going to talk about the hockey bag. No wonder the FBI picked up the hockey bag. They looked at her GPS and saw where she was. That has the clothes in it, I'm guessing. Here's John. All right, so we're on the right page, or right track. Here's the Hierophant and El Diablo. Well, everyone knows, and this is where the keys are. And here's Allie. All right. Well, I mean, basically all we need are these three cards right here. We have John O'Keefe's card. We have Josh Levy. Pick up the pace if you want to keep your job. And we have El Diablo. All right, so this is where the secrets are. I'm going to clear these. I'm going to light some sage. All right. So Ali has the secrets. I have probably 20 questions to ask. I want to know what happened between 12.30 and 1.30 on the night of January, the morning of January 29th. All right, was this premeditated? Let's ask between Colin, uh, Colin and Allie. <laughs> it's a tough day to be a criminal. All right, good. So Colin knew he was going to get in this fight before he called Allie for a ride, which I don't know how much of that name that's true. I don't care. Okay, so yes, it was premeditated. Well, that means, yeah, she can, yeah, she participated in a conspiracy and she was culpable. Criminal minds. You don't even have to watch TV or be a lawyer to know those. So there's, yeah, I mean, this is straight up cover up. Did she willingly participate? Yes. Were her decisions made? I would say, yeah, Allie's in trouble. We've known that for a lot, a long time, but. Did she dispose of any evidence? We already got that she was driving her mom's Jeep. And that's why the FBI, like within a week or I don't know, went to a house and got a hockey bag. Whether you believe Sean, I don't, but I do trust that one thing. If Turtle Boy reported on it, I don't know if he did or not. Then I would say it's true. I don't want to get involved in any of that drama but my loyalty just lied to karen and i don't have time for the dark stuff so so this is what i think they did okay i'm gonna i'm gonna say this out loud because we've said it a million times and all these questions are running through my head i think well ali was already at the house so 
when did she leave and why? Who cares? Then Allie and Colin left. I think they took the dog. And I think they took it to the high school. Chloe. Sorry. Oh, I just called her an it. Sorry, Chloe. Took Chloe. C-H-L-A. To the high school. Okay. Allie and Colin, Colin took Chloe to the high school. Who picked her up from the high school. Then she's seen driving around for an hour after this. Where's she driving? Where did they dispose of the evidence? Where is it now? That's what we need to know. Okay, let's ask if Allie had, okay. I did get that it was premeditated before that night, but did Allie help dispose of evidence? Never. All right, let's do two out of three. Did Allie help dispose of evidence? And I might need to, okay, let's ask it the same way and see. I'll tell you later. Did Allie knowingly dispose of evidence? It's the same number card. All right, cards aren't going to play. Fair and cheating. Yeah, we know. All right. So we just did our mashup. The cards were exactly as you would expect. I wonder if Colin flipped. We know Nicole and Brian did. I'm trying to remember where that Hierophant landed. It was on his side or her side. Oh, that would have been that our answer, I bet you. Okay, absolutely not. That's less good valley float. I'll tell you later. These are the same cards over and over. It's where that hierophant landed. And now I can't remember where it landed. I think it was on the left and Allie was on the left. Did Allie flip? Never. That's that same card. I'm gonna set it aside. It keeps jumping out at us. Did Allie flip? Indeed. Okay, let's do two out of three, but did Allie flip? No, without question. Oh, boy. There might be hope for Allie. Allie saw the writing on the wall. We just got three alley flipped. Good. She should. She's okay. 
Okay. That's a game changer. I get it now. I thought that we had beaten this Alley Colin thing to death. I thought it was done. No, it was not done. Alley Flip. That may be four confirmations. So that makes a lot more sense. Maybe our conscience got to her. I would love that for her. <laughs> let's do a reading on Allie today. Let's do, let's see how she's doing right now. Or should we do that night? Let's do today. Well, this is what we needed to know. Allie, flipped. okay. <laughs> it's all coming together now. All right. So let's just do Allie and I'll just let everyone lead it. Allie McCabe, what's going on with Allie? This is all allegedly for entertainment purposes only. There are no facts here. Everyone has Google and I literally am a chick with paradise. <laughs> Except I do love justice. <laughs> okay. And if anyone knows, if anyone can confirm that Colin wears a size nine and a half shoe or who at the house had the nine and a half shoe, that'd be very helpful. I'm like 99% sure it's Colin's, but I'm not sure. All right. I'm going to set some more sacred space or uh, clear the space. Oh yeah, Ali's card. And Ali's card is here. Remember I kept, oh, and here's the cherry. Remember I kept saying, oh, I just need to make sure you guys are still on. Okay. I kept saying they should get married so she doesn't have to testify against him. Well, the lover showed up. Here's Allie and Jennifer. I mean, sorry, Allie and Karen. Allie's fine. And here's Colin and Albert running in like a psycho. Here are the lovers. I don't know if they've hooked up. I care less. They're not cousins, so. Here's judgment. Here's the tower. We just did a death lesson yesterday. If you saw... Okay, if you're learning and you saw judgment, well, okay, so you have the lovers. This could be their energies intertwined because it's like very convoluted. There's judgment day. And here's the tower, it's over. So the tower to me is 9-11. Buildings are falling. It's not a reset. And I know other people read it that way and that's nice. And here's the chariot, and she's a magician. She's lying and pulling stuff out of a hat. This, this is a lot of major arcana cards here. Judgment, the tower, the moon, and the lovers. These are life-changing events. She got in trouble with her lover, whether they are actually, she, this is her and Karen. She drove the getaway car. I mean, at this moment, you almost can't tell me that Colin didn't murder John. And she made things disappear. Where are the clothes that he had on? Judgment day is coming and everything is falling apart around her. Because she is stuck between two horrible decisions. And this, this to me literally is right out of our death lesson. She's made so many horrible decisions. Eight feet under or eight feet cell. Her life is over as she knows it. There's no Hierophant here right now, but here's another magic card. It's bleeding. This is like happiness for a moment. It's a three-person pact. There's a little page there. And here's Colin running in like a psycho. What is it called? A gold clock or something? 
when you get hit one time and it it knocks you out, that's what I think happened. There's like one minute of overlap between when John got there and Colin left. If she hasn't flipped, oh no. Oh boy. I'm getting something that's like um, highly concerning. So I'm gonna ask if I can say it out loud. If I can, then we're gonna go down that road, but signs point to yes, okay. I don't know what is going on down there. What I do know, I'm just reading energy on a card. I do help police officers though solve crime, so <laughs> and we found I'll play that later. I don't know how long Allie will be in this meat suit. And I am saying that because I don't know if she would make it to a trial. I'm not getting suicide. I'm getting. Maybe it's her mental health isn't. She's about to lose everything. And I mean, including it could be her meat suit, too. Here's Higgins' mommy issues. This is. Stress and anxiety, everyone's seeing between the lines. And this is an overkill card. This is uh, out in the cold, and this is a dead little boy. Allie can't die. All the secrets will die with her. Ay, ay, ay. Is she reckless? Like, we don't have any addiction cards. I'm not getting suicide. I'm getting like. What this feels like is I live in New England. So in the beginning of, or at the end of winter, there's thin ice and people still, especially when I lived in Maine, but drive their trucks out on like very thin ice. I feel like that's Allie right now. She's like on really thin ice. I don't know if it's her mental health or her meat suit. We literally just had our death lesson yesterday. And three of the eight, oh, almost four of the eight cards are here. Where's the tower? I'm not getting like, I don't know. I don't, I'm not getting, I don't know. I don't know what's going on down there, Allie. I don't need, I'm not even getting like mental health. I'm getting like, I mean, this is over. This is 9-11. This is a rock and a hard place. And this is a dead little boy. This is stress and anxiety. This is the ultimate, ultimate broken heart. This is like the kind of pain like Ethan used to show it to us all the time. This is fleeting happiness, and I think there's another three, three person pack. Here's Ali. Here's the chariot to get all of the evidence. It's a magic show. They pull stuff out of a hat. Judgment Day is definitely coming. Because Colin started ready and he went into battle, and she's entangled with her lover. I don't know if Allie's going to make it to a trial, and I don't know if she'll be alive, and I don't know what's going to happen. We just had a death lesson, though, and all of the cards are here. 
Valley can't die. We need justice. <laughs> Wonder if that's like being metaphysical. It's like, or um, it's not our reality. It's like maybe the person she was died. Should just go real for Ali. I mean, I don't know. She's like suicidal. I'm not getting suicidal. I'm not getting anyone else does anything to her. I'm getting that she does it. I don't know. I mean, I know what I just saw. But I'm not getting like Nicole Albert had like serious remorse and grief. There's none of that here. That's like, I have no judgment on suicide at all. That's your path and you get to just come back and do it again and it'll be harder, but it feels like the easy way out. I would keep an eye on her. Her life is like definitely, I don't know if it's metaphorical or what. Is, I wouldn't want that for anyone that I loved or cared about. I wouldn't want to see that anywhere. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Ellie's in trouble. And I don't know what kind of trouble she's in. She's in some big trouble. And perhaps it's like, oh, okay. yeah. perhaps it's like metaphysical. And her life as she knows is, is over. We got that she flipped, but right after that, we got all, every death card that I just taught us last night. Almost everyone. Which one didn't? Oh, the one that actually says death. That's not really death, though. That's just a change. The tower is straight up death. The overkill card is death. The ultimate broken heart. It could be John and John's dad and Karen. Well, I understand. Now more of the pieces are coming together. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Tough night to be a criminal, but everyone's having a better day than Allie. I don't even know what to say. Like, I wouldn't want to see that for anyone, ever. Even Allie McCabe, I mean. Shit just got real for her, or it has gotten real. Somewhere, there's like, but there's no emotion. That's the main thing. There's not one remorse or sympathy card. It's all, it feels very much like the easy way out. Good luck, you get to do it again. Will you learn the lesson? Maybe her lesson was like independence. I don't know if anyone's getting anything different. I'm going to stand by that though. We will look back into this probably not tonight, but I'll do it again. Now I understand where the urgency came from. It's getting some urgent messages and for homework for you guys. If anyone could confirm that Colin has a size nine and a half shoe. And if any of our friends are down by the probate court, I can send it. There's four probate, I think four probate courts in your county. And I can send it wherever. We might be doing like fax mail. What is it? Fax mail or something like faxing. I don't know. It's old school. But if anyone can help me with that, let me know. That'll answer a few more questions. I don't want to explain it all yet until I'm holding it. And then I'll we'll walk through it. Together, but Ali was like 20 something wasn't she like 21 or 19 or something she was young imagine throwing your entire life away when you're 19 that's not like getting frightening I mean now I'm a little older and when you hear your girlfriends are pregnant you're happy for them there was a time that that was not 
as <laughs> enjoyable, but it's not like getting pregnant when you're 20. It's just life changing, like um, life ending for a lot of people. All right, well, I'm going to love you and leave you. I guess we should send love and light to Ali. But this, these are not mental health cards. This is like the easy way. I feel like it's an easy way out until, I mean, she'll have to come back and do it again. Allegedly, in my opinion. Love you. Good night. Thank you for coming.